From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now, in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Gold of the Sudan. Fifteen degrees north of the equator, in the heart of the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, the White Nile and the Blue Nile flow together. And where they meet, they form a narrow hook of land that resembles an elephant's trunk in shape. The picturesque city that stands there has been named for the Arabic word meaning elephant's trunk, Khartoum. Khartoum is an attractive city, but there's nothing attractive about its jail. Even in the bright heat of midday, it was cold and sinister as the turnkey walked down the cell block and opened the door to a clammy, barren dungeon. Ah, you there. Huh? You've got a visitor, you have. <laughs> well, no, there's no one here to see me. There is. Unless someone's got their records in a mess. Their name's Alexis Varen, ain't it? Ja? Ja, I'm Alexis Varen. Well, then, come along with me. I've got other things to do, besides taking you to the visitor's room I have. Someone to see me. At last. Who? Who is it? Well, it so happens I forgot to ask him for his calling card. I just told the gent to have a seat, and I'd go and see if His Excellency was receiving callers today. What did he look like? He ain't a pretty good-looking customer, I can tell you that. Not that you're any beauty with that six-month growth of beard and those rags. Well... Go on in. I'll let you know when your time's up. Cooler. You have come to get me out. Sit down, Alexis. We can talk through this opening here. No, the offense was small and the fine is practically nothing. You will get me out soon? Huh? Perhaps. Provided you are willing to work to repay the amount I lay out for your fine. Oh, I will. I'll do anything, Cola. Good. As long as you agree to do anything, I shall pay the assessment at once. I'll give you a day or two to rest, to clean up and buy clothes suitable for the jungle. The jungle? Then we will purchase the supplies required for a safari and head for the interior. No. No, don't ask me to go into the jungle. So many enemies have I faced and eradicated in my time, but I am afraid of Tarzan. Afraid? Often he has caught me breaking the laws of the jungle, and always he has permitted me to escape. But last time he warned me that... Uh, no, Cola, no, anything but the jungle. Goodbye, Alexis. I'll send you a few cigarettes sometime, if I remember. No! No, don't go away and leave me here. Cola, Cola, come back. Well, will you come into the jungle? Yeah. Yeah, I will do anything, only don't leave me in jail for anything. Good. I came to you because you know the jungle well. And you do not possess too many scruples. So? What will we be searching for in the jungle? Gold. <laughs> yeah, you came to the right man. You know I'm an engineer by training. If we do not have any interference from Tarzan, I should have no trouble... As so far as Tarzan is concerned, we will go well equipped to handle any lord of the jungle. As far as your engineering skill goes, you will not need it. What? Not need a knowledge of engineering to mine gold? The gold I seek was mined many, many years ago. It is in the hands of natives. So, natives with a large quantity of gold. That's strange. The stranger still is the legend connected with the gold of the Sudan. <laughs> no. To secure this gold, we will not need mining equipment. Only guns and methods of forcing men to talk. In just a moment, we will transport you back to Africa and the gold of the Sudan.
Months passed and Kola and Varen plunged deep into the jungle, intent on finding the gold of the Sudan. Their coming brought trouble to the Sudanese, but no report of their activities had reached Tarzan, whose seacoast cabin was more than 1,500 miles away. Relaxing after many dangerous adventures, he was enjoying the lagoon near his favorite retreat. He dove into the water like some great sea god of old. His muscles rippled as his powerful strokes propelled him across the pool. And for the first time in many moons, his laughter rang with the sheer joy of being alive. <laughs> Tarzan! I say, Tarzan! Captain Lawrence! Tarzan, swim over this way. I want to talk to you. Oh, come on in. We can talk here. I can't swim. Of course you can't. You're on dry land. But that isn't what I mean. <laughs> Oh, you were poking fun at me. Come, I'll give you a hand up. Uh, 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 oh, thank you, Captain Lawrence. I never would have managed to scale that rock without your help. <laughs> By Jove, I've never seen you in better spirits. <laughs> well, it uh, seems a shame to ask you to leave your pleasant little retreat here, Tarzan, but the fact of the matter is I need help again. And what is it this time, Captain Lawrence? Kidnapping in the Sudan. All of it within a clearly defined radius about Khartoum. Here, I'll show you on this map. Organized kidnapping in a fixed radius? That seems peculiar. Huh. Here's where the first case occurred, near Sendi. The next report uh, concerning a kidnapping was from Kasala, just south of there. Uh, right here, can you see? No, I'm afraid I'm getting the map a little wet. If you'll wait until Don't I try... Don't bother the map. And now then, uh, from Kasala, they evidently circled southwest for the next abduction took place here. In Wad Medoni. Why do you use the terms kidnapping and abducting? Surely this must be the work of slave raiders. No, hardly that. They've taken only one man at a time. One man from each tribe. Well, perhaps they merely select the strongest young man from each group. Well, that's what has me completely baffled. You see, every one of those taken has been over 45. 45 years of age? Yes. But they would bring little in the slave markets. This is the most puzzling thing I've ever heard of. But there must be an answer. Of course there is. And we can only find it in the Sudan. The journey to the heart of the Sudan was long and dangerous. For over half of French equatorial Africa had to be traversed. And ferocious animals, always in quest of food often tested the strength and courage of Tarzan and Captain Lawrence. But at last, the travelers reached the village of the Urbani tribe, the scene of the last of death. Well, they seem to be holding a showery. They're wearing devil masks. That means real trouble. Mawanangwa! I say, is it all right to interrupt the meeting? This is the only time we can interrupt it. Within a few hours, the frenzy of their dancing and their singing will carry them to such a fever pitch that no stranger would dare approach their fire. Do you know the chief? I came here once many years ago. Unless their preparations for war have already blotted out their reason, we shall be safe. Mawanangwa! Pass! Pass! Who oh, approach fire Urbani time? I am Tarzan. Do you not remember me? Tarzan. Yes. Yeah. Me remember. Who are the white men? Now, this is Captain Lawrence of the governmental police. Uh -huh. We've come to find those who have taken a man of your tribe. To bring the captive back if he still lives and, and to punish those who captured him. Our warrior back now. Urbani punish white men who torture him. They tortured him and then returned him to your village? No. He escaped. May we talk to him? Yes, perhaps he can give us some information. Now he talk only in sign language of tribes. So? Come back weak, sick, frightened. White men die when men or Barney tribe catch them. Have you any idea who they were? In sign language, men they capture tell names, but not clear. Names sound like Kole and Varro. Hmm. One of them could be the man who was released from the prison in Khartoum a few months ago. His name sounded a little like uh, Varro. Uh, let's see now. Varin, that's it. Alexis Varin? Why, yes. 
His first name was Alexis. You know him? Our paths have crossed many times. He's a cruel and ruthless killer who would stop at nothing. Yes, this sounds like his work. We get him. No, no, this is a matter for the governmental police. I know how you feel. But the time has passed when native tribes can take the law in their own hands. Chief, how long is it since the man they tortured returned to your village? Mm, a few hours. Then we can follow the trail he made on his return. It will take us to the place where they committed their atrocities. But what guarantee will we have that they'll still be there? There is no guarantee, nor is there one governing the actions of the Obani tribe. Mm. However, if we reach Varen first, we may be able to prevent him from torturing other natives. Well, I hope so. Just as the natives crave revenge, so do I crave to see justice enacted in the case of Alexis Varen. <laughs> Captain Lawrence, this is where the trail ends. Hmm. In a canyon of solid rock? Well, they could hardly have had their headquarters here. It must be near here. Every animal we passed marked the trail of the tortured warrior. The animals marked the path? Every place he walked, he left the scent of blood. Yes, the place where they tortured him must be close by here. Tarzan, what in the world are you doing? Looking for a bit of solid stone that is not solid. Ah, here's what I've been looking for. Why, it's a cave. Right behind this big rock. There must be. <clears throat> Just a minute, I'll help you. Oh, I can make it. Ah, there. Well, looks like quite a big cave. Yes, and someone's been living here very recently. See, the ashes in the fireplace are still warm. Hmm. Bedding, cooking utensils, some old magazines... Could we open that rock any further so we could let in some more light? Oh, here's an old kerosene lamp. Do you have a match? No, right up. Here, I'll light the lamp. Hmm. Ah, there you are. Yes, Alexis Varen's been here all right. Here's a knapsack with his name on it. Well, I'm more interested in this old magazine here. Adventure Monthly. Hmm. Why... It's over 20 years old. Why in the world should they want to carry along a magazine of that age? Huh, I thought so. Here's a page that's been dog-eared. You're not trying to take time now to read a 20-year-old magazine article. Uh, it's just a short paragraph, Dawson. I think you'll be interested. All right, go ahead. Uh, during the First World War, large quantities of cattle and foodstuffs were purchased from the Sudanese by the Allies, payment being made with thousands of pounds of gold. The only form of payment the natives would accept during the First World War? The gold was taken into the interior, and to date it has never been deposited in any of the world's banks. Perhaps the natives buried it. Only men 45 years old or more would have any remembrance of those times. At any rate, it has never been found. Perhaps someday... Well, I guess that answers a few things, Tarzan. Oh, it's incredible that people should be so blind. Blind? And what do you mean? And I suppose when you stop to think that some still search for Captain Kidd's treasures... Uh, someone's sealing the cave. Oh, quick, Tarzan. No! Uh, I, I can't move it. But you moved the rock when we came in. It took all of my strength. And now they've piled many other rocks on top of the big one. They can lift the rocks one at a time, but I have to move them all at once. Uh, here, I'll see what I can do. Together now. Uh, uh. No, it's no use. And they're still piling other rocks on. You will not make your escape, Tarzan. Varen. Yes, Varen. Your old friend. Look, Varen. In the past, I have held you captive and let you go. I shall not be so foolish. You search for the gold of the Sudan. The gold that was earned by the natives during the First World War. Isn't that right? Perhaps. You can't hurt us now, Varen. Yes, that's what we search for. If I were to tell you where it is, would you set us free? Tarzan. You know where it is? I do. The chief who received the money once told me where it is. Then tell us, and we will set you free. The gold is in the earth, in the northern part of the Coacha Valley, near the village of the Obani people. <laughs> Thank you, Tarzan. Thank you, and goodbye. What? Tarzan, I, I can't understand you. Oh, they swallowed that fish story, all right, but just as you might have expected, they've gone off and left us. What now? I don't know. But make no mistake about a fish story, Captain. What I told them concerning the location of the wealth they seek was true. <laughs> Thank you.
In just a moment, we shall return with a solution of the mystery of the gold of the Sudan. Left alone in the cave, Tarzan and Captain Lawrence extinguished the kerosene lamp, for the supply of oxygen was meager, and even the tiny amount consumed by the flame might mean the difference between life and death. The air, robbed of its oxygen, was becoming unbearable. So far, Tarzan had not been too greatly affected, but Captain Lawrence was having great trouble breathing. <coughs> I guess I figured wrong. I thought when I directed Varen and his companion to the Urbani country that the Urbanis would realize we were in trouble and they'd follow our spore. I, I'm sorry to say this, Tarzan, but this time you guessed wrong all the way. Getting us into this fix and telling the scoundrels where the gold is buried. Yes, in the jungle, even one error is often fatal. But we're not dead yet. I'm, I'm having great difficulty breathing. I, I don't think I can stand this long. And it's time to take a chance. It will mean escape or an even more violent death. How many cartridges in your belt? Uh, it's full, but what in the name of heaven... Hand me the belt. I'm holding it out. Can you... Yes, I... I have it. I've lost my bearings. I'm not even sure where the entrance to the cave is. I have to feel... Oh, there it is. I say, are you pounding on those cartridges? I have to if I want to get the gunpowder out. Captain, get down on your hands and knees and feel about for the kerosene lamp. All right, huh? But if you keep pounding on those shells... Oh, well, we haven't much to lose. But I'm not sure what you're about. I'm making a pile of the gunpowder at the base of the rock that blocks the entrance. When I set it off, the blast will travel in one of two ways. Out or in. Oh. Here, I, I found the lantern. Oh, pull the wick out and hand it to me now, will you? I do We'll either make our escape or we'll bring a mountain down upon our heads. Now, here's the wick. It's pretty wet. <coughs> the smell of kerosene isn't helping the air any. Where are you? Right here, right here. I have it. Now, a match, please. Here you are. Turn to the wall and cover your face with your hands. Even if the blast goes well, we'll have plenty of flying fragments. You ready? Yes. Ah, the wick's burning. Flame has about an inch to travel yet. About half an inch now. It's about... You feeling all right, Captain? Huh. A lot better than I did inside that cave, I can tell you that. I'm sorry I've made you travel so far and so fast since our escape, but we have to reach the Kowacha Valley before Varen and the other one tire of digging for gold. Where is this Kowacha Valley? I've never heard of it. You said it was near the Urbani village, but we passed the crawl a good half hour ago. Now, we're practically there. Just around this bend, you'll see the native's hidden valley of Kowacha. And I think it will surprise you. Ah, here we are. Just beyond this rock is the... Tarzan. Tarzan, this is amazing. A great concrete dam, locks, an irrigation system, broad fields of growing foodstuffs, but... But there is no record of such a project in the official files at Khartoum. Drop to the ground. Someone's firing arrows at us. Kill, white men. Shoot arrows. Treat men of Urban. Hold your arrows, Mawanganawa. Hey. We are friends. It is Tarzan, Captain Lawrence. Sorry, shoot arrows. Think you other white men who destroy our valley. And they are here. They dig big holes all over. We attack, but they use big thunder sticks, shoot many balls of fire one time. Machine guns. If I ever get my hands on them. Look, I... look, we're up there on the top of the locks. But, uh, I can't make out anything. There, silhouetted against the sun. Two figures. Mm. Look, now they dig hole in locks. They are ruined. 
Yes, and if they break through the locks, this whole valley will be a torrent of water. Mm, work all year swept away. We can't attack them from the valley. We'd be like a row of clay pigeons if they have machine guns. We circle about through jungle. Come from behind them. Yeah, it will take you an hour to reach there that way. Well, perhaps that would be best. Go ahead, Mawanangwa. Take your men through the jungle. Captain Lawrence, maybe you'd better go with them. And you? I'm going straight across the valley. I'll take my chances scaling the dam and climbing up to the locks above. As the natives, led by Captain Lawrence and their chief, disappeared into the heavy jungle that surrounded the fertile valley, Tarzan made his way across the abundant fields. Undetected by the men who still pursued their relentless search for the gold of the Sudan, he reached the base of the dam and began to climb upwards to the locks that restrained the vast reservoir of water. Now it was a race against time. Tarzan had to reach Varan and Kola before they saw him, and before their spades and pickaxes brought destruction down upon the secret valley of Kawacha. Now Tarzan drew near, but the men were intent on their digging, and Tarzan's light footsteps were blotted out by the sounds of their tools. Kola! Look! Tarzan! Yes, Varan, it is Tarzan! <laughs> Kula! Kula, help me! I'm getting the machine gun! No, no, don't shoot the gun! Hit me! Attack him from behind! Put his fence away from my scope! No, don't hit him! Choose your boots! Kick him! Let's pull his arms uh, off. I have uh, one arm. I have uh, the other. Now, over the side. Yeah. Throw him over the edge of the back. No. No. No, you won't. Oh, get away with this. You can't. Over the edge. He's slipping. My feet. I'm slipping. I, I can't get a grip. I, oh! Well... That finishes off the lord of the jungle. No. He's grabbed onto a small ledge below us, almost straight down. So? Uh, Kula, hand me the machine gun. Yes, a difficult shot. He's flat against the wall. I think my hatred will give me accuracy. The gun, Kula. Uh, here. Aim carefully. If it gets away this time, I have a feeling. You missed him. Yeah. Yeah, but I stuck the concrete only a few feet away from him. And this time I can compensate. Here we are! After the, the natives! Yeah, they are coming at us. A machine gun, Varen. Turn it on them. And the natives, Varen. It's... It, it's James. A hand for your life. Uh, After them! Little Rubani! Go! What? Stop! Tarzan hangs on ledge below. Well, well you're right. Tarzan, we're here. We'll save you. Have no rope to lower. But we must do something. Captain Lawrence, you hold Mawanangwa feet. He hold Zinga's feet. Zinga hold Mauda's feet. Make human rope to save Lord of Jungle. Huh? And so the human ladder was lowered to save Tarzan from the perilous ledge. For now, even his arms ached from the weight of his great body, and the rough concrete had bitten deeply into his hands. The ladder of men swung over the yawning chasm like a giant pendulum it dangled in thin air. Finally, the fingers of the last native clutched those of Tarzan and then began the grueling task of raising the combined weight of all the men. Sweat glistened on strong black arms, muscles ached, but at last the human ladder was raised to safety. Captain Lawrence, Mawanangwa, men of Urbani, you will never know my gratitude. As though all of us didn't owe you far more. We follow Varin, other men. No, not yet. Unless you hurry to mend that place where they dug for gold, all of our activities will have been wasted. We go work now. Save our valley from flood. Come, we get tools, cement, fix that. Well, Tarzan, I think it's time for a little explaining. There's really little to explain. This valley represents the wealth and the labor of the natives. They've always mistrusted white men, so when they used the gold they'd earned during the First World War to build this experimental agricultural center in the jungle, they worked with secrecy. It took many years, but at last the gold was spent and the dam was completed. But you told Varen and Kola that the gold was buried What here. I said was that the gold was in the earth. And so it is. Planted in long, straight rows of grain and cotton and peanut plants and, and other foods. 
A guarantee for the future. More important than any metal in the world. This is now the gold of the Sudan. In just a moment, a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. Tarzan has no desire to attend the wedding of the Oriental potentate, but a refusal from the Lord of the Jungle may cause much trouble. So, arrayed in unaccustomed splendor, mounted on a richly adorned elephant, Tarzan rides to the exotic city of Amdumara, rides into a maelstrom of trouble, adventure, and intrigue. In our next story, Stolen Jewels. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.